life begins at the end of your comfort zone. You're only truly alive when you are out of your comfort zone. I was dabbling along after this Manhattan swim. I was down, I was depressed. I wasn't out of my comfort zone. In fact, I was trying to do everything to try and make myself more comfortable. I was scared of movement even. I was scared of hurting my back basically wrapping myself up in cotton wool, thinking that right, yeah, very much this is it. I've resigned myself to the fact that I'm too old, I'm never gonna get back into these things. If pushing yourself only makes you feel uncomfortable for a short time, but the experience will of course last, uh, last a lifetime. And hopefully by putting this video together, I'm hoping to try and shed a bit of perspective because we all go through these things. We all, you know, sometimes we feel like we're the only person dealing with it or what have you. Ultimately, what I was actually missing at that point in my life, definitely, was this uh, sense of meaning or this this goal that I wanted to to strive towards, and and uh, and that's why it's so great to be doing that this this weekend. Mother Nature is definitely in control of this race. Yes. It is nature that is dictating the course, and I think that's the way that uh, adventure multisport should be. The massive 75 kilometer course from Sanhan to Uta is a challenge in itself, and today it was even more so as the competitors had to deal with strong gale force winds and a raging sea. I got home and Michelle says, oh, that's it, you, you're a champion, you, 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 this is it, you got the Attila. And I said, Mish, that's only a third of the distance I've got to do out there on Monday. It's not, yeah, yeah it sounds impressive to have done a half marathon on a Sunday morning before everyone's got out of bed, but... Uh, really, you know, uh, we're talking a whole different ball game. 65 k's of trail running on Monday. I haven't even run a marathon before. I think one of the things training for this Attila has taught me is that it's going to be a bloody long day out there. Um, it's going to be the hardest event I've ever done in my life, no question. Um, and ultimately, you're going to go through pain. You're going to go through pain um, on that course. Um, there's going to be times when your legs are going to feel absolutely trashed. Your shoulders are going to be wrecked. Um, your stomach's not going to be too settled and stuff like that. But I think what I've learned this through this process of training for this particular event is, is how to manage those injuries and manage those things. I'm excited. I'm hugely nervous. I'd like to say I'm very respectful of the course and very respectful of the fact and honoured and privileged to be you know, for us to even be racing there, because it's a some fantastic athletes do this event. Um, but it's it's a, it's a great feeling, and um, you know, I've been thinking about doing this little video for a while now, and it's it just seemed like the right time to actually to actually do it. So if you've if you're out there, if you if you're struggling yourself, if you're going through these periods of self doubt and stuff, just know that it is totally totally natural. Training, life, life balance is not wonderful 100% of the time. And I think that I think when you stress too much about the need for it to be like that, it just makes the whole thing worse. And, you know, I, I'm saying these words, they're coming out of my mouth right now. And I know I'm the world's biggest hypocrite. I, I probably need to sit down and watch this video myself every now and again and just realize that, um, you know, oh, you said that, but now look at you, you're back in this little hole again. And... athletes at the start of what is going to be a very very long and demanding day uh, they run in their wetsuits and they swim in their shoes we can see the water in the background now and at any second now they'll come bursting out of this forest and onto the little beach here in Sandham and straight into the water for the first swim This is not an extreme triathlon, this is not an adventure race, this is the sport of swim run, which was born here in the Stockholm archipelago. This is the 12th time we've had this world championship race. Uh, 26 islands, 75 kilometers, 52 transitions from the water to the land and back again. Something else than others, like Iron Man or other competitions. It's like a fairy tale. It's beautiful. 
Hi there, everybody. Uh, Paul Newsom here from uh, Swim Smooth. Um, it's just a few days before we do the uh, Attilo or Attilo 2018 over in the Stockholm Archipelago in Sweden. Out on the peak wind, 1.4 kilometers, heavy, heavy waves. It's an event which I've been training up for now for well over 12 months and uh, feeling very much ready and prepared for the event. It's, uh, it's an exciting experience, very daunting experience. Not the top three men's teams there, and they are neck and neck and neck out at the front of the field there. So I'm going to be doing it with a long-term friend and uh, training partner, Andy Blow from Precision Hydration. Uh, me and Andy go back a long, long way, back to uh, Bath University, um, where we both did sports science and both on the British triathlon team. I can't believe it now, 20 years ago. If you look at the size of that wave, I mean, essentially you'd want to be reaching for your surfboard here rather than anything else, but uh, they've no surfboards out there. They could have brought one with them, but... I just wanted to put together like a, a little bit of a video uh, diary, if you like, uh, just talking about some of my uh, experiences training up for the event and what sort of inspired me to have a go doing this. Um, this video is likely to be a bit of a verbal diarrhea, let's say, probably um, gone off a couple of tangents just in terms of trying to sort of set the picture about uh, my experiences in training and racing with these in big endurance events and, uh, and what really you know gets me out of bed in the morning and gets me training for them. My last major, major competition that I really undertook properly and trained properly for was the Manhattan Island Marathon Swim, which was in June 2013. I had exceptional preparation for that event. In the last uh, 10 weeks, I achieved all my training objectives leading up to the event and I, I went over to that event very, very prepared prepared and good in the mindset for that particular event and um, luckily I uh, came through and, and won that event so you know 46 kilometers or 28 and a half miles around uh, Manhattan Island it was an amazing experience one which I learned a lot from but I, I just think back to that moment I, I remember touching the finish line and the only thing that went through my head was I feel like I totally got the formula right the amount of training that I needed to be doing, it was my, my training volume there was a third of the guy who finished in second place, uh, who in his own right is a very, very good swimmer, of course, but um, I had the training, val training volume right. I felt like I had this life balance, if you like, uh, correct. So um, I was you know, doing quite a bit of work, of course, uh, with Swim Smooth and uh, training and uh, family life and social life. And I felt like I had a really... I was in a really, really good place. And I remember finishing that event just in, on a real positive high. And that's not my nature, <laughs> believe it or not. I might come across on some of these videos as happy-go-lucky, very smiley, very positive. But if I'm absolutely br brutally honest, um, I, 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 you know, I, I d definitely suffer with, um, over the years, some um, self-doubt, uh, as I'm sure we all do, um, training up for these big events. And um you know, I often find myself procrastinate, procrastinating about the type of training I'm doing. But to actually finish that race, uh, to have won it, um, to have felt good the whole way around the race um, was just a, a really, really awesome experience. And and I was so excited about going back to Perth following, following on from that race in New York that um, I got back to Perth on the super high. Everything in life seemed rosy and pretty. And then sure enough, I got back to Perth and I, I injured my back. And still to this day, I don't know how that actually happened. Um, the net result was after around about four or five months of severe uh, back pain and um, loss of use of my right leg um, through like a like nerve impingement, I had to go in for back surgery. And it was a real psychological blow was that because I'd gone from this massive high to suddenly not being able to even play on the floor with my kids. I couldn't get down onto the floor. And, you know, I was 35 years of age. Next week, I actually turned 40. So at the age of 35, to actually go through spinal, you know, major spinal operations to try and fix my back, it was a bit of a slap in the face. And it was like, you know, like a big come down from, from that particular event. So it's, it's taught me a few things over the, the last few years because I one of the reasons I haven't trained up for a major event, you know, I've done a few of these swim running events and stuff, but I wouldn't say I've really tackled the training like I've like I've done for this next weekend with Andy um you know I had a I had a big blow to the to the self-confidence it was a feeling that my body was letting me down breaking down and I'm only 35 and, you know what's going on and you know I've got two young kids my uh, little boy Jackson he's nine my little girl Ira is six so five years ago you know we're talking four and uh, and just just a year or two uh, in age um and, you know, to be in that sort of position where you've got a bad back and you just feel like you're, you're maybe not parenting as well as you should, you should be doing. And 
um, yeah, it was a bit of a bit of a tough time really, and um, definitely felt like I went through a bit of a bit of a ringer there. Sort of snapping forwards though, I I just found myself, and I'm sure I'm, I'm hopefully by putting this video together, I'm hoping to try and shed a bit of perspective because we all go through these things. We all, you know, sometimes we feel like we're the only person dealing with it or what have you, and um, you know, with some of these sort of uh, negative thoughts or what have you. But I, I went for a period there where I was. I put on a bit of weight. I, um, I became, I, I'd say I'd actually become a little bit depressed in, in sort of thinking, you know, this is it. I, how am I possibly going to get my body up and do these great events, which I love to do when I can't even get out of bed in the morning. And um, I got to a point where, you know, the, the thing I was doing, I was actually coming home of an, of an evening and it sounds bad. Like even talking about this now sounds bad, but you know, I'd open up a glass of wine and have a couple of, or a bottle of wine, I should say, and have a, a glass or two um, uh, of an evening because I, I just felt like I just needed to, with the stress of work and, and with the kids and my back and stuff, I, you know, I was, I was essentially going down a bit of a, a bit of a slippery slope there for a while, I reckon. And um, so I guess, I guess the thing that I'm trying to say is that what snapped me out of this is, is recognizing what really drives me forwards. And you know, I'm not somebody who can just go and do exercise. I I feel like I have to train for something. I have to have a goal for something. I'm very, very goal-driven like that. And, you know, I think one of the things that these swim, run and Ertilur races have, have taught me is that you can do that to a level whereby you can put in the time and effort to train hard um, and try to achieve your objectives, etc. But do it in a fun and a shared way. So to be doing this with you know one of my one of my best mates, Andy Blow, um, who we've spent thousands and thousands of hours training with over the years, albeit nothing in the last 17 years whatsoever. Um, it's it's going to be an awesome thing. And we've just been down here. I'm, I'm in Bournemouth at the moment. I'm looking out to the Isle of Wight, which is where my dad was born. I can see the needles over here beautiful flat calm day we've just done our first swim run session together and it went really well you know we had doubts uh, Andy had doubts about whether or not he'd be able to stay with me on the swim I didn't think that would be an issue and it wasn't um I've got doubts that my running's not going as well as his um just looking like Strava files and stuff start to doubt whether or not you can uh, you can keep up with your partner but I'm feeling feeling fairly fairly comfortable and confident with that and really excited about what's uh, about to unfold in a couple of days time um so you know, getting on, on track with this, it's about, you know, for me, we found out about, it's probably about a year ago that we were going to, or we decided that we were going to do this. And one of our, one of our good friends, unfortunately, Julian Jenkinson passed away at the age of 46 from a heart attack um, and heart, con, uh, uh, heart condition. And, and that was a bit of a, you know, at the age of 46, it's a bit of a sobering thought to think that one of your training partners over the years who you've held in the highest of esteem and still do um, should suffer uh, medical condition like that um, it definitely pulled me out of my bit of bit of a fog that I was finding myself in this bit of a funk where I was just thinking well you know I'm, I'm 35 I'm getting older um, I've got to make sure I'm actually um, putting food on the table and I've got to be a good parent and stuff but ultimately what I was actually missing at that point in my life definitely was this uh, sense of meaning or this this goal that I wanted to to strive towards and and uh, and that's why it's so great to be doing that this this weekend. And um, I feel obviously very fortunate to be in that position. And everyone, uh, you know, I've, I'm so grateful for everybody out there who's been giving, sending me messages of support and stuff. And the one thing that everyone keeps saying is like, you know, you've done all this training. We know you've done this training. We know you've done really well. And the term keeps popping up. You got this. You know, I find that a very Americanized or Americanism, maybe. You got this, man. You got this. But it, everyone seems to be saying this, and and it, and I, I guess I've, I've, you know, the last couple of weeks, I've had a couple of niggles, and um, again that self doubt starts to creep in. Have I done enough training? Am I going to be fast enough to keep up with Andy? Um, you know, the, the volume. Ha, this we're going to be out there for ten plus hours probably on on Monday. I haven't done a training session for 10 hours. In fact, my longest session's probably only been about three or four. So how am I going to deal with that, you know, in the, in the second half of the second half of the race? So, um, yeah, very fortunate to, to be here and to have the support of my family. And, um, you know, just before I came out, I'm holding this card here. Uh, but my wife, Michelle, is an absolute trooper. And before I do any of these big events, she always gets me one of these, these cards. And we had to have a little bit of a giggle about this. I'm not sure how well you can see that, but it says... 
it's a picture of a dude jumping off a, uh, a rope swing and it says life begins at the end of your comfort zone and Michelle had a little bit of a laugh at me because she says you're only truly alive Paul when you are out of your comfort zone and I guess that's what the purpose of this video is really you know I was dabbling along after this Manhattan swim I was down I was depressed um, I wasn't out of my comfort zone. I was actually, in fact, I was trying to do everything to try and make myself more comfortable. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't, I was scared of movement even. I was scared of hurting my back. Um, I, was, I, was, I was basically wrapping myself up in cotton wool thinking that, right, you know, very much this is it. I've resigned myself to the fact that I'm too old. I'm never going to get back into these things. So Michelle sent me this card. Life begins at the end of your comfort zone. We had this little bit of a chat, uh, bit of a giggle about it, and, um, but it's it, you know it's absolutely true. You know, there's um, she just says here, pushing yourself only makes you feel uncomfortable for a short time, but the experience will of course last uh, last a lifetime. Um, the kids have drawn me up these fun little things here. Uh, swim, Dad, swim. You're my hero. Uh, Forty years in the making. From Michelle, you are stronger, fitter, and more determined than ever before for a race. You got this, babe. Uh, deep breath. Um, and then Jackson's done a little thing where he's, he's <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. But in fact, I know it's not going to happen. But he's got his, uh, he's got us up on the uh, up on the podium there with some dude in second place saying, "I know these guys are too fast." And um, but it says, "Come on, Dad, you can do it. I know you can." So having that sort of support from your family is is, is awesome, but. You know, I listen to a lot of these podcasts where people talk about, you know, it's so important to get your life in balance and uh, Rich Roll um, and uh, Chris Hoff just recently done a, uh, a podcast talking about this, about, uh, about getting your life in balance, about the, the three-legged stool um, being um, being career, family slash social, and then also your training objectives as well. And, you know, I think we all struggle sometimes to think that we have to have this perfect balance, but to train up for an event like this, you have to make some sacrifices, and um, I, I definitely feel like I've done that. Um, you know, taking the up early every morning, 4, 4 a.m. I have to get up. So I, I, I'm up every single morning at 4.20 a.m. Uh, five of those mornings are spent uh, coaching, um, and the other two are actually so I can get up and do the training sessions before the kids uh, the kids get up. So definitely quite a bit of commitment there. I mean, there's nothing more I'd like in the world to actually roll over and um, have a sleep in and have a cuddle with the kids and, and that. But this is just a temporary thing. You know, it's not it's not something I'm doing um, all the time. I'll do this event and I'll have another little bit of downtime, etc. But it's that it's that seek, you know, it's that it's it, these periods of comfort. are OK, but it's it's also, you know, it's not. It's not the end of the world to be uncomfortable in that space as well. And, you know, many people talk about, we, we profess the importance of CSS training in, in swimming, uh, threshold-based training. And the typical um, way people describe that level of intensity is uncomfortably or comfortably uncomfortable. You know, and I think many of us in our life, maybe we're stressing, you know, we're trying to push more to being just too comfortable and not pushing ourselves outside that, that comfort zone. So, um yeah you know you've got to definitely get out there and and um and uh, and push those boundaries a little bit so um yeah i'm i'm hoping that we've we're just listening into a little bit of this you know it, it social media is just such a funny old platform you know the the, the feeling is you've always got to put out there that you know life is wonderful um everything is rosy in the garden etc and uh, it seems like you've got to really really push and strive to have that out there but um, certainly my experience over the last five years has not been anything like that at all. I've suffered major periods of depression and self-doubt, especially, and the feeling that I'm getting older. And, and I know some of you might be listening to this and you might be in your fifties and your sixties and thinking, yeah, what's this guy talking about? He's not even 40 yet, but it, it's, it, it's just when you get into that mindset, you know, I, I know plenty of people, Barry, who I coach over in Perth, he's 83 years of age, but you know, he's not 83 in his, in his head. He says, you know, the, the, the major thing he, uh, you know, we say, Barry, what's your secret? Why, how, how are you looking so good? And why are you still training? Like, he swims four or five times a week with us, sometimes up to five Ks in a session. And he just says, my secret is I just never stop. And he never, he never, he's always just slightly on that boundary of being in his uncomfortable zone. And, um, but he's alive, you know, and there's been periods in the last five years where I just haven't felt alive and i think 
doing an event like this, and it might not be a two it might just be, it might be a trail runner, it might be a, um, a trek somewhere or, or something like that, but building up for something like that, I think is so, so important. And the, the thing that's really kept me on the straight and narrow over the last 12 months for this event is knowing that I'm doing this with a, with a partner who I've got the utmost respect for in terms of, well, in terms of who he is and, and you know, the fact that he's got a young family as well, um, uh, runs a very successful uh, hydration um, company, which is actually sponsoring the Attilo um, event as well. And, um, and we're both of the, of, of, of the same age. So there's, there's that angle to it, which sort of motivates you to make sure you're, you're doing your fair share of the, of the, of the training load. Cause I, I, I don't want to be, I don't want to be, uh, I don't want Andy to have to pull me around the event. It might happen of course, but, um, I want to make sure that I've done everything I can to, to not, to not be in that situation. Um, but you know, routine for me is such an important thing. And I, it's only really been this year that I've actually fully understood how much routine um, makes a makes a makes a, a big big difference, you know. So my training load for this event it hasn't been crazy. I'll just talk you through what I what I have been doing for for any of you who are interested in maybe doing one of these events. But um, yeah, we bang on all the time about being consistent, and that's my only goal over the last twelve months is to be as consistent as I possibly can. Um, I've been scared about getting niggles for the run. Um, I've been balancing some of the running with riding on the indoor trainer uh, using Swift or Zwift. Uh, that's been a really fantastic tool. I love, I love using that. And that's following on from Attila. I think my plan is to actually just get back on the bike and, and do some do some racing through Swift and probably out on the road as well. But anyway, on a uh, on a Monday morning, talk about putting yourself out of the comfort zone. I have to start my Monday morning with 10 times 400s doing the classic red mist endurance set and i'll do the same set every single week it's just like a routine it allows me to know where i'm at um i often go into that thinking that i've had a big sunday because that's where i've been doing my long runs um i do the i do the uh, monday morning i do these 10 400s but the sense of achievement from getting through that yes it's hard to get out of bed you know i i don't necessarily have to get up at 4 20 on a monday morning if i don't want to I don't start coaching until seven, but I, I, I just want to squeeze this session in. And if I get that session in on Monday, it really does set me up for a good week. And uh, Monday evening, I've been riding an hour, hour and a half on Swift and oftentimes doing uh, some of the little uh, mini races that they have on there. I found that and that's been a real eye opener for me. And, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you know, you're a very serious athlete and stuff and just smile a bit more when you race. And that's very true. You know, I, I, uh, I, I, I do have the, the race face on and I'll definitely have that race face on over the weekend. I, I'm not ashamed about that. You know, I will certainly try and smile and stuff. But um, I think the, the thing that's really inspired me with using Swift is that it's that competitive element. You know, I love the fact that I can actually just see that there's an event coming up at 6.30 p.m. and I can join in with... 40 of the riders or something and, and and i get my kicks from from just racing you know that's what that's my meaning is actually getting out there and racing I, i've really only everyone's always said that about me but i've only really embraced it within myself and um you know i don't know it needs to be second world records or anything like that but just that 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 feeling of actually being driven on um the shared sort of purpose get to the finish line as quick as you can type of thing yeah, so that's my Monday. On Tuesday, I'll typically do our technique endurance session in the pool, which has been around about 4Ks. And I've been doing lots of pool boy and paddles for that because the event, the Attilo event, you're allowed to use pool boy uh, and paddles. So I've been testing different combinations to see what works best for me. Um, I'm going with uh, Hoob, um, who we're part of, and um, have very kindly uh, created some special gear for me and Andy. We've got a, a fused big boy. So if you've ever seen these big boys, they're about three or four times the buoyancy of a normal pool boy, but we've actually got two fused together. So we're talking serious buoyancy there and uh, it just helps to float the legs higher in the water, reduce some of the drag created by the shoes. Um, we're using a pair of uh, Innovate um, trail running shoes, the Talon, I think they're called, uh, and they've been fantastic. Andy sourced those for us. So thanks, um, Innovate, for, uh, for for sending those over. Um, I really enjoyed using those. Uh, so on my, on this Tuesday morning session, that 4K is, is all about using all the gear and just sort of testing it. Um, on the uh, Tuesday afternoon, that's when I've been doing my sort of, um, I wouldn't call it speed work on the run because I don't, I actually honestly don't think I've got any speed left in the tank these days. And I've been scared to push a bit too fast. But again, it sounds quite boring, but it just helps with that consistency, helps with that routine. 
every Tuesday for the, literally for the last nine months, I've been doing a, um, a session where I'll do a, a warm up of about three Ks and then I'll do a, a 500, a um, mm-hmm. thousand, 1500, a 2K, a 1500, a K, and then a 500. So it's like a little pyramid. And between each one of those little intervals, I won't actually stop running. Um, I'll, I'll just actually jog for 300 meters between the between them. Um, so it gives me eight Ks of hard running with uh, around about two Ks of easy running, just separating it out. Now, when I did the first one, I remember it, I, I think my fastest intervals were averaging around about I don't know, 405, 410 per K. And yeah, I was really giving it some beans. And then I'd be reduced to a jog of six, six and a half minutes per K. So that's nine months ago. Um, and that felt yeah, it felt like a hard work. And I just thought, I just want to be able to get consistent with being able to do these intervals at four minutes per K. Um, but what's been really interesting over the last, certainly the last three or four months, uh, as the fitness has really started to come through there, is the ability to, you know, I've been able to run these intervals now at around about, three, well, anyway, between about 335 and 345 per K. Uh, and the jogs have actually been able to stay at around about 430, 445 per K. So for that for that run, which ends up being 13 kilometers, I'm averaging four, including the warm-up and the cool-down and the interval uh, recovery bits between, averaging just over four minutes per K for that 13 K. So that, I feel that's a real step forward. I don't feel like I've become suddenly mega quick. I... I doubt, I very much doubt that I could run quicker than, um, I don't know, maybe, I reckon if I had a good, if I did a 10K flat race run now, I reckon I'd be very happy with a sub 38 minutes, maybe, maybe 37, I don't know, something like that. Anyway, but the progression has been more about the ability to, you know, recover quickly between those intervals uh, and not pull up sore from the from that particular interval either. Um, on a Wednesday, I'll do our threshold session in the pool. So I basically just copy. So I coach every morning from typically from 5.30 till about 11. And then I'll get in the pool over the lunch period and do the same set that everyone else has just done in the pool earlier on that morning. So I'll do a threshold session. And um, I reckon my, um, just from testing and stuff, my threshold pace long course meters at the moment is around about 116 per 100 meters. Um, so I feel like I'm in a good place. Prior to doing Manhattan, I would have been, I would have been actually more like about one. Uh, 108 to 111 per 100 meters. So I'm certainly not in that sort of swimming shape. And and with all this gear on, it slows you down tremendously. You know, if you can hold 130 per 100 out there with all the gear on, you, you you're doing pretty well. Um, uh, Wednesday evening I'll do another Swift. On Thursday, Thursday has been my big swim run day. So I've got a course in Perth. Uh, it's 20 kilometers uh in total it's around about three or four k's of swimming and the rest is running i'm just constantly in and out of the water and running on a lot of it is on like rocks and stuff like this so it's not particularly fast running but very technical um not as technical as uh, as sweden's going to be and that's definitely filling my head with a bit of fear for sure um but it, that's been a really good uh, good session, you know. And again, I've just been sort of monitoring how I'm getting quicker. I haven't necessarily been increasing the length of uh, of any of these sessions, really. Um, just having that consistency of of delivery. On Friday, I've been doing a um, a yoga session. So after I finish work, I go for a yoga session at twelve midday and Jeanette my uh, yoga instructor she's been absolutely fantastic and just last week she said you know do you want to do a little bit of um, hypnotherapy I was like yeah sure why not you know and so she started to unpack some of what I've been stressing about things like the niggles the fear is my body going to hold up am I going to is it going to slow me down I'm going to hold Andy back and just help me unpack some of that which was uh, which was really really good experience so I've been consistently going down there for the last actually close to about the last two it might actually be two or three years actually to that session every Friday. Um, it's not a hardcore yoga session; it's more of a meditative than anything else. But I definitely think I need that just to get my headspace in the in the right space. Um, Friday afternoon, I'll do a, a, a long run, uh, typically about 20 kilometres. Um, and I've been holding around about anywhere between about 4:10 and 4:20, 4:20, 25 per k for those runs. Um, and just feeling good, confident with those is building up. Saturday, it depends a little bit with the kids' sport. Uh, I work again early on a Saturday morning. Um, so if I can get something in, it might normally be just like a little another swift session on the bike. Um, I find that so awesome because, you know, on the evenings I can just put the kids to bed. Uh, Michelle's working late and uh, I've just gone and lock myself in my man shed with my uh, I use a, a, a Tax um, Neo Smart wind trainer, which is awesome. 
controls the uh, the gradient and the resistance and stuff from from Swift. And I just hide out in my little man cave, and I'm happy as Larry. You know, gone are the days of just cracking open that bottle of wine and just having a couple of glasses, thinking, feeling sorry for myself, and and thinking, you know, why is my body letting me down? Like, just getting out there and actually moving is, you know, it seems people used to say, you got a bad back, rest it up, lay down on your back. Not at all. I've got to keep moving. And um, so that's, that's been great for that. So anyway, that brings me around to our, my key session of the week then, which is the Sunday. And Sunday is, on a few of the Sundays, I've been doing some long swim run events. So um, you know, one just a couple of weeks ago was a, did a 3K run, um, around about four and a half minutes per K. So a 3K run with all the gear on. Uh, a 2K swim at around about one, 130 per 100. Uh, a half marathon running all the gear on some really rough, uh, boggy, sandy terrain. Um, I was quite pleased to be able to hold, I think it was about 440 per K. And we're talking some of those sections really quite quite slow. So that was good. It was a full half marathon. Then get back into the water, do another 2K swim at about 130 and then run home for another 3K. So, you know, it, that... I got home and Michelle says, "Oh, that's it! You, you're a champion! You, you, you! This is it! You got the Attilo!" And I said, "Mish, that's only a third of the distance I've got to do out there on Monday. It's not, yeah, you know, yeah. It sounds impressive to have done a half marathon on a Sunday morning before everyone's got out of bed, but uh, really, you know, uh, we're talking a whole different ball game. 65 k's of trail running on Monday. I haven't even run a marathon before. Um, 10 k's of swimming." it's uh that's that's a that's a tough gig that's a tough gig um but the 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 key thing on this uh, on the sunday session and this has really been my rock if you like and um and my, my training partner chris not over in, in perth who's a very very good uh, very consistent runner um he's um he's just run a, he's run a few marathons around the three hour mark or 301 for the for the marathon um chris has been absolutely my rock when i'm doing these training sessions on a sunday super reliable um he always comes and meets me at my place so it's been quite good because i've been i'll try and do a 15 minute 15 20 minute ride on swift first just to loosen the legs up a little bit and then we've been going out and we've uh, i think our first run together was 25 26 k's and that was back in january and then uh, pretty much every weekend uh, certainly when I've been around, we've been doing anything between about 25 and 36 Ks. Haven't gone over 36. That's been the longest run. Um, but just very, very measured. You know, we go out, we have that first K. The first K is normally about five, about five minutes per K. And then we just dial it in and we've just been gradually getting faster and better. Um, those longer runs, currently we've been averaging um, like 420s or 425s per K for, for the best part of a marathon run. Um, and we're not, you know, we're not killing it. We're just dialing in the pace, getting good with it. Um, we try to do as much as that of those as we can do on, like on a hillier um, course off road. Um, but it's been great, you know, and, and actually just being able to run alongside somebody who's, you know, Chris is like me, is a no nonsense sort of guy. He just wants to get on with it, get it done. Um, you know, we. I think Chris tries to have a bit of conversation with me, but um, I'm not the most communicative when I'm when I'm training and stuff. I, I don't know why it is. I just feel like I, I feel like I've got to maintain the focus and um, that laser-like vision, if you like. Of, of just I've got to hit my paces and stuff. And you know, I'm, I'm sure with with Attila at the weekend, that's a lot of that's going to go out the uh, out the window, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure that's going to be a very very good thing for me personally. Um, is to sort of say, okay, well, you know, you've done all this training, you know where your paces have been, but come Monday, that's all just going to go totally out the window because your pace is going to mean nothing when you're scrambling over rocks and boulders like this and slipping around and through mud and under trees and all that sort of stuff. It's going to be totally irrelevant. But I know uh, that I've had this good preparation, that I'm ready for it, I'm prepared for it. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm feeling, feeling pretty good. So... Um, anyway, I, I figured I'd just round off as well. We're talking through some of the some of the niggles, and I think one of the big things which um, uh, I've dealt with this time better than I've done as, as, a, as a triathlete. As a triathlete, I you know, I'm talking 20 years ago. I definitely, absolutely, no question, was very. Um, I probably still am. Probably some people still think of me very much in this way, being quite egotistical. Um, I remember 
I remember doing all these training sessions at Bath University and being able to train and race, or train, I should say, with some of the world's best triathletes at that point and thinking, well, that's almost as good as being able to race with them, but it's not at all. It's completely different. You know, just telling myself, if I can hold this pace with such and such an athlete, then, you know, that means I should be able to do such and such in a race. But I came to these races and it would always fall fall down and I think a lot of that was to do with poor pacing I'm the classic guy going off way too fast but a lot of it was almost too much self-belief I think um a belief that I was actually better than I probably well than I was you know um training you know you might be thinking these guys who you think you're keeping up with and you think that they're going at 100% are probably only going at 80% and you're more likely going at 120% thinking that's your rite of passage to suddenly being this great athlete but it's that's not the case at all and um i'd like to think i've mellowed in that capacity over the years um but the the drive is still is still there and um it's going to definitely be um this race at the weekend is definitely going to be a bit of a slap in the face andy has been training he's training the house down on the run a bit nervous about that about being able to keep up with him um but you know going back to those uh those training days and stuff i back in bath i was i seemed to be constantly injured and and when i when i get an injury it was like the whole world had fallen down and i get very depressed about it and i'd almost the, the only way at that point i could get through some of these niggles and stuff was to simply walk away from the sport at times and and um and just try to try to ignore it because i've become so the first two or three weeks of an injury i'd just be so focused on that injury that i couldn't think about anything else and i'm still my wife will be laughing listening to this because she's a physio and she knows that that's still very much the case it becomes all consuming but i think one of the things training for this until i was taught me is that it's going to be a bloody long day out there um it's going to be the hardest event i've ever done in my life no question um and ultimately you're going to go through pain you're going to go through pain um, on that course. Um, there's going to be times when your legs are going to feel absolutely trashed. Your shoulders are going to be wrecked. Um, your stomach's not going to be too settled and stuff like that. But I think what I've learned this through this process of training for this particular event is is how to manage those injuries and manage those things. You know, it's not. I wouldn't. I haven't been able to prevent injuries. In fact, I've had a couple. I've got a thing called a Morton's Neuroma, which apparently, if you between your uh, if these were the, your toes here, apparently it's caused from actually being squished. Your toes being your feet have been squished, and I've actually got a very narrow foot. And over the years, I've always actually typically worn like a, a lady's running shoe uh, to try and get the the the, uh, the tightness there. And uh, Andy was just laughing the other day, saying, "Oh yeah, I remember you used to tighten your shoes up really, really tight." And apparently that's caused some nerve irritation between my toes. So I've had a couple of shots of cortisone 10 weeks ago and that got me that got me through, allowed me to keep running again. And then um, uh, another two shots. So thank you, Dr. Laurie Dembo, for organising that for me and being such a superstar with that. Um, so I just had a couple of more shots in the foot just a couple of days ago and the foot's feeling good again. So it's a funny thing because it's not really an injury as such. It's more of a, I guess it's more of a biomechanical condition, which has obviously been exacerbated by the volume of running I've been doing, but um, which has peaked out at around about 100, 100Ks a week. But as Andy was saying, you know, you you can talk about, oh, I've, I've been running 100Ks a week, but you only remember the really peak weeks. Um, I think the average has been more like about 60, 65Ks, but you know, I'm still happy with that, still happy with that. So I've had that, I've had a little bit of an issue on the on the left knee, um, which caused me a bit of stability concerns for this race being so technical. Of course, my back's been uh, something which I've had to had to monitor as well. But I guess the major thing, I haven't stopped this time. I haven't let that get in the way. I've tried to manage it, having Michelle on hand um, with, the, with the acupuncture that we've been going through and the exercises. She's an absolute trooper. I am the worst patient in the world to treat for injuries, no question. I don't do my exercises like I should do. I um, I'm too quick to get back into into doing things, um, but um, you know I, I haven't stopped. I haven't stopped. I guess is what I'm saying. You know, I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find a way of actually managing that. And some of you might do that 
already you might just sort of accept and embrace that but for me that's always been a, a thing that I've, I've actually struggled with is actually being able to manage those issues and um you know um and just sort of forge ahead rather than thinking it's got to be the end of the world and this is it you're not going to be able to race in sweden so i'm here it's um it's thursday morning i'm racing on monday so we've got what is that three or four days to go we fly out on saturday i'm excited i'm hugely nervous i'd like to say i'm very respectful of the course and very respectful of the fact and honored and privileged to be you know for us to even be racing there because it's a some fantastic athletes do this event um but it's 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 a great feeling and um yeah i've been thinking about doing this little video for a while now and it's it just seemed like the right time to actually to actually do it so if you've if you're out there if you if you're struggling yourself if you're going through these periods of self-doubt and stuff just know that it is totally totally natural you look at stuff and we you know we're as guilty as the next person about putting stuff out on facebook and twitter and instagram look at this isn't it fantastic look at this training set isn't it wonderful blah 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 blah. but training life life balance is not wonderful 100 percent of the time and i think that i think when you stress too much about the need for it to be like that it just makes the whole thing worse and you know i i'm saying these words they're coming out of my mouth right now and I know I'm the world's biggest hypocrite. I, I probably need to sit down and watch this video myself every now and again and just realize that, um, you know, oh, you said that, but now look at you. You're back in this little hole again. And uh, why aren't you getting out of bed? Why why do you feel down in the dumps and stuff like that? But um, it's just, yeah, so having that, uh, having that goal, something to aim for. So um, it's very, very important for me, as I'm sure it is for you. Um and yeah, and just never, I guess, just never saying, and that sounds cliche, but never saying never. Not writing yourself off, not believing that because you're turning 40. You know, it's the classic midlife crisis, isn't it? You know, turning 40, that's it, the end of the world. Go out and buy a Ferrari. Well, I can't afford to buy a Ferrari, but I can afford to do something much better for myself, which is look after my body and get myself back on track. And, you know, I've lost about 11 kilos training up to, uh, training up for this event. I feel the best I felt in a long, long time. I feel healthier. Um, I haven't gone on any crazy diet or anything like that. I am not, you know, no disrespect to anybody who, who is following a crazy diet or what have you, but I've just managed to do it by um, tuning down portion sizes, um, cutting out sugary drinks for me has been a huge thing. I, I definitely had used to have a bit of an addiction, I think, to Coke, uh, Coca-Cola. I, um, yeah, I haven't got that. I haven't got that addiction anymore. I'm onto the fizzy waters now, so I've got a soda stream at home. That, it's just the tingle, the uh, the effervescence on the on the mouth, like with the brocca that I think I, I crave more than the actual sugar. Uh, so I've cut that down, um, and just obviously the, the the training volume, the consistency of that, and, it, and it's great to feel in this type of shape going into my 40th birthday. Um, you know, long may it continue. I mean, it, the reality is, is as I um, I've, I've got a, a friend and a um, a psychologist who I see from time to time as well, who, who's helped me talk through a lot of a lot of, um, a lot of this. Thanks, Pete. Um, and you know, he talks about this idea that you know, it, you, you try. We're all trying to be happy. We're all trying to be positive. We're all trying to find meaning and purpose in what we do, etc. But um, but these feelings and motivation and these emotions they wax and wane as well they're not it's not just because i'm feeling like this right now and i'm telling you guys what to try and do that's not to say that you know next week i don't fall in a bit of a funk because i haven't i haven't got this event to train for anymore so i think uh yeah it's just you just got to roll with the punches take the rough with the smooth got this beautiful smooth day out here but who knows on monday it's going to be could be rough and choppy you just got to ride ride with the punches there so anyway Thanks for listening to this. I'm sure I've gone off in quite a few tangents. Uh, I'm not sure how many people are still listening at this point, but I just wanted to give a really open, honest, frank account of the training that I've done for this particular event and also where and how I found myself at this point training up for these events and what, what they what they mean for me. You know, everyone talks about it's not the it's not the destination, it's the journey. And I know it sounds super cliche, but it's absolutely true. Um you just got to get yourself, just got to get yourself started. And I reckon the key to that is finding a little bit of a routine. Um, not going hardcore, not necessarily trying to train the house down, 
but just getting this consistent routine that fits in and around what you're doing. Um, we were just having a little joke yesterday, me and Andy. Andy said uh, when he tallied up what his big training weeks have been, it's been about seven hours of training. You know, we used to think that a training week wasn't worthwhile unless you'd done 20 to 25 hours of training. So how could possibly seven hours of training be, be beneficial? But you just become better at get, obviously getting the quality in and um, and just recognising that with a young family and a business and, you know, you're trying to, and a wife and uh, everything else that goes along with those things, kind of spin all these plates and keep them all up there. So anyway, thanks for listening. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it maybe encourages you to think a little bit about how you're balancing your own life and maybe what some of your goals might be to aim towards, etc. Um, yeah. And just, uh, just keep it real and hope uh, that we enjoyed it. So thanks from Sunny Bournemouth. I'll sign out for now. That's enough verbal diary for me. And uh, all the best with your swimming, triathlon, adventure racing, whatever it is that you're, uh, you're planning on doing out there. Keep it real, keep it balanced, and uh, you know, try, on the most part, to keep it balanced and, uh, and positive. Thanks.